So hey y'all, I'm back with another video. So tonight's video is yet again another Chama Chats video podcast edition. So by the title, we're going to be doing another compilation video where I take three hot topics and do a quick rundown of my thoughts and opinions on trending stories. I am so sorry that I have been gone. This past weekend was my college's homecoming. So I was there lit with my alumni at the University of Toledo. Go Rockets. Shout out to all of the subscribers that I met. I love y'all for real. If y'all ever see me out, please speak to me. I'm very cool and I know that my shit stinks, so please talk to me. I'm not weird, and I really do love meeting y'all. So on the docket tonight, we have the whole Khloe Kardashian and Tristan Thompson saga being played out on the season two premiere of the Kardashians Hulu show. We also have Krishan Rock leaking her sex tape with Blueface after saying that she and him are broken up. And of course, we have singer Danny Lay and comedian B. Simone getting into a little controversy over rapper The Baby and Danny Lay filming the show Wild and Out without B. Simone per Danny's request. So y'all know how I like to do it. Get straight to the point. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. So our first story is about Khloe Kardashian and Tristan Thompson. The Kardashians recently premiered their season two of their show on Hulu called The Kardashians. And the first episode was primarily focused on Khloe and her reaction to Tristan having a baby with another woman. Now, I know what you're thinking. Chama, why did you watch this? I've been having extreme insomnia for the past week and a half and I just stay up all night and my mind just won't let me go to sleep. So after about seven straight episodes of Dance Moms, yes, I watched that show, I decided to watch The Kardashians because they kept promoting it on Hulu. Plus, I do find interest in all of the storylines because I feel like they are calculated and the Kardashians are not realizing that their relevance is dwindling and the stories that they put out to the public to stay relevant make them look very shallow. So I initially was not going to watch this season, but I did see the clip of Chloe addressing Tristan's cheating on a lot of social media blogs. Here's what Chloe had to say. He did an embryo transfer like days before Thanksgiving and I found out about Tristan's situation the first week of December. And it's just so close. I wouldn't want anyone to think I did this after the fact. Why would I want to have a baby with someone who's having a baby with somebody else? Because I'm not that much of a sociopath. <clears throat> I'm a lunatic, but not like that deranged. So personally, I feel like this first episode was really dragged. Like they were really dragging it. They are really dragging this story out because the last episode of the last season ended with Chloe finding out about Tristan and then it resumes with Chloe's reaction and her coping with the situation. And I will say this, I do think Chloe is being very genuine in her feelings. When she said that she may have been a psycho but not a full-blown sociopath, I think that was honest because it is a bit crazy and psychotic for someone to remain emotionally invested in someone who has done this level of disrespect like Tristan. It's one thing if he cheated once and never did it again, but Tristan has no remorse for any of the things that he does because he continuously plays in her face. I'm glad that Chloe left him for good, so she says, and if I had one thing to tell Chloe, it would be, you really can do better than that man. Tristan Thompson wants to be a Kardashian. He wants to be a bad bitch. He likes the fame and the attention that he gets for being ain't shit. He wants to be like Future and all of these other nakers who receive praise or take pride in being toxic, having their way with women, and being sought after by women. Tristan just needs to go ahead and drop a hot 16 because he moves like a rapper. And not to say that athletes can't be on the same type of time that rappers do, but rappers really got them beat. Now, back to Chloe. Chloe announced within the last few days that Tristan Thompson did try to propose to her and she declined the proposal. <laughs> okay. I believe this is supposed to be the storyline for the second episode of this season. And to be honest, I think Chloe right now is trying to be vulnerable, but also trying to show that she isn't dumb like everybody has been calling her. In the they often reference and talk about mean comments and people saying things about Chloe, but they constantly put their lives up for millions of people to judge. I don't know. I don't want to dehumanize a human, but it kind of seems a bit weird that they touched on a lot of the backlash that Chloe gets from the media about this Tristan situation, all while continuing to make it the forefront of her relevance right now. I even saw somebody in the comments say, without Kanye West and Kim Kardashian and their divorce drama, and then Chloe Kardashian and Tristan Thompson and their relationship drama, the Kardashians don't have a story line, which is very true because the rest of the sisters and the whole family are very boring. Kylie Jenner is boring, Kourtney Kardashian is and has always been kind of boring, and Kendall to me is boring. Chloe and Kim are the fuel of this fire, and I think that's why they are in a lot of scenes in the show, at least from the first and only episode that I watched thus far, that showcase Kim and Chloe. Chloe claims to have rejected Tristan Thompson's marriage proposal, which I guess is good for her. I'm glad she did, even though I don't believe her. And like I said before, my unpopular opinion is that she will eventually leave this man and 
move on. With the birth of her second child, which is also a focus on the first episode, I think Chloe is content with the two kids by Tristan and she knowingly has deciphered between what's more important. Having a two-parent household where there's always drama and toxicity that her kids will sooner than later understand and hear it, or being a single mother and doing healthy co-parenting with Tristan, which she always gives credit to him for being a good dad. Tristan is just so ghetto. Four kids by three different women. If you want to be DMX, future, NBA young boy, Lil Durk, Fetty Wap, just say that. I actually wish Chloe the best because I've started to see the physical deterioration of her. Also mentioned and previewed for this second episode is how Chloe has become so skinny. And I do believe that this is weight loss that comes from stress. And I went through this as well when I was going through a heartbreak like two summers ago. It was bad because I got down to my high school weight, which is crazy because I never constantly maintained my high school weight while in college. I would say I fluctuate between 185 and 195. I'm five foot 10 with a shelf booty. But when I was dealing with that, I had got down to 170, 175. And the only thing that changed was how much I was crying, how anxious I was, how heartbroken I was, my lack of appetite, and so much more. So when it develops into a physical clash between what we know Chloe to look like and what she has been looking like as of late, I can't help but point out that she has got to get her emotional and mental health back. I did a whole video on Chloe and why I think she has a problem that she does, and her body image has been a huge focus during the length of her career. So to see her almost shape shift from being deemed as the fat sister to where now she is being the thinnest out of all of them is really crazy. I think if they stop talking about Tristan and let him fall into oblivion, that would be better healing for her than constantly having to talk about it for views and ratings. I understand that discussing your trauma is a form of therapy, which I think is fair for her to speak on it, but they can't keep dragging it the way that they have been. As I was watching it, it was like, how much longer is Chloe going to talk about this ain't shit naker? And how much longer is Chloe going to continue to let it consume her when she's more important and more successful than a Tristan Thompson? So my next story is about Krishan Rock and Blueface breaking up slash her exposing their sex tape and then posting cryptic tweets about their situation. It's just a lot going on. I don't have much to say other than the fact that this is a shit show and this is also fueling all of the allegations I made towards Krishan Rock in my past videos. I've always said that she was a clout chaser. I've always said that she knows exactly what she's doing. I've always said that she's not that dumb. And I've always said that if she did not have the appeal that she has with her being light skinned, sort of likable and comedic, she would not be able to pull off any of this nonsense and tomfoolery. So what we have here is Krishan Rock exposing a sex tape with her and her boyfriend Blueface. I'm not even sure if I can call him her boyfriend because let her tell it they are broken up. But after she tweeted that, the very next day, not even 24 hours later, she goes live on Instagram again where her and Blueface are in bed. People then allege that she was having sexual relations with him on the live stream in which she debunked and said that's not possible because if she was, she would be doing better than that. And then she decided to prove herself. So she then took to Twitter and posted an approximately 20 second clip of her and Blueface doing the dirty. And I really thought that she was trolling, but the video is real and it is up. And I saw a pretty pink pulsing, piping hot punishing, put it on a pedestal pussy. Or should I say, I saw a pretty white pulsing, piping hot punishing, put it on a pedestal pussy. It was a lot of white substance and it was just very interesting that she would intentionally expose herself to prove to the internet that her and Blueface have great sex as well as her and Blueface are still an item or will always be. There was a big debate on whether or not that was a yeast infection or if that she was a creamer. I'm not an OBGYN, so what do I know? I don't care. I'm leaning on the side of it really being that some women do produce a lot of cream, but again, what do I know? I think what we are witnessing is Krishan Rock having a mighty epiphany. And this epiphany is so mighty because she's realizing that her whole entire relevance and success is contingent on her antics. People like to say that if it wasn't for Krishan Rock, that Blueface wouldn't be relevant, which is facts. However, Blueface still had a name before Krishan Rock. He still had money before Krishan Rock. He just wasn't relevant anymore. They both have resurged their careers in some way, shape, or form, and they both have realized that without one another doing all of these crazy, ballistic, and self-deprecating actions, they will fall into oblivion. They've captivated everybody's inner ratchet, everybody's guilty pleasure to tune into the nuttiness, and have manipulated the blogs to keep them in everybody's face. But I think Krishan Rock and Blueface need to know that everybody gets tired and nothing lasts forever. The fact that this is a young woman that is so capable of being so much better than her situation, especially after hearing about her upbringing to where she is right now is technically a blessing. This girl has been through so much hardship, so much struggle, abuse, abandonment, the whole nine yards, and has somehow been given an opportunity to create a name for herself, feed herself and her family, and never having to revisit some of the turmoil that she has experienced. But instead, she's taking her opportunity and making herself a laughing stock, a caricature, and ruining her reputation all over clout, attention, and a pulsing piping penis. 
I think we should say a prayer and that prayer should be, Lord, please release any woman from the shackles of tainted love, lust for sexual relations and inherent mental manipulation of any sort. Because that's all I'm seeing in this situation. I would say I hope for the best, but I really could care less what happens now because she's crossed the line several times and is going to continue to do so. Posting your own sex tape is not going to give you Kim Kardashian respect and relevance. The Kardashians aren't even respected anymore. They're just simply tolerated as an entity that has a long tenure in entertainment. Krishan Rock is still a black girl and maybe fun and laughter now, but she won't be able to reap the benefits that a bad baby or Danielle Bergoli would get or anybody else. Her pushing the stereotype of the angry, violent, loudmouth black woman only amuses the small amount of black people who are lacking brain cells and don't care about this image being detrimental. All I can say is we'll see what they do next because I'm pretty sure this story is not over. So our third and final story is about Danny Lay and B. Simone trending for an incident involving Danny Lay removing B. Simone from filming the show Wild and Out during her episode. So according to the Neighborhood Talk, it reads, filming for season 19 and 20 of Wild and Out just wrapped up. But what wasn't kept under wraps was what went down behind the scenes. Singer Danny Lay made her first appearance on the show just a few days ago, and the No Limits artist shared a video of herself having a good old time in the green screen room, dancing and smiling as she recorded her promo clips. While things appear to have gone pretty smoothly, an insider told us that she made a special diva request before stepping on set. A close source shared that Danny Lay demanded producers to pull B. Simone from her episode, all because she allegedly assumed the comedian slept with her baby daddy, the baby. Now, B. Simone has been a long-standing cast member of the MTV hit series with six seasons to her name. Despite all of that, Danny was adamant about her demands, and so producers had B. sit out as they filmed. So I have a lot of unpopular opinions or unpopular things to say about this because I feel that people don't know how to look at situations in an unbiased format. Everybody has a little bit of bias in them, but when you let it override your whole perception of a situation, that's where I draw the line. So for the record, I think both of these ladies are actually pretty airheaded with some of the things that they do and say. I think B. Simone plays a lot into always having to be comedic, even when she doesn't have to. And I get it, she's a comedian, but I would have respected her a little bit more if there wasn't a diss track, a seemingly ironically planned interview on the Tamron Hall show, and how the story was just released so randomly. B. Simone was the same woman who was gassing Danny Lay when she was evidently rejected by the baby. And I always knew that when you have such an ain't shit naker like the baby, there was no way that he wasn't going to fulfill the request of B. Simone. And by that, I mean a man like that seeing a woman be so desperate, so forward, and so gung-ho over his whole entire existence and appearance is still going to pursue her even if he has no interest in her in the long run. That's exactly what the baby did and he played her. By the way, a video on the baby is coming soon because he needs to be dragged again. So there's nothing far-fetched to me that the baby and B. Simone either hooked up, flirted, texted, or anything of that nature because with his personality and her obsessive desperation for him at that time, it made sense why this would be an issue. I think B. Simone leaked the story just to do it because the same day that it came out was the same day that she was doing an interview and that's not how press tours work. The industry is very shady and it makes me so apprehensive to get into it because I'm just too real in my opinion to do weird shit and damn near have to put on a facade just to cross paths with certain people and be deemed successful by wishy-washy fans. And I truly believe that all of this was done because Danny Lay is so easy to pick on meaning that she already has a very bad track record. And speaking of Danny, I think Danny tries to play the victim a lot or at least she comes off as the victim even if she isn't trying because when she addresses the situation it's always very melancholic it's always very monotone and it's always very mute about the things that she does it's always like somebody's attacking her and it's never about some of the things that she's done to receive those attacks but i will say my unpopular opinion is that in this case i don't think danny lay is that wrong danny lay is not all the way wrong because i think whatever the situation was or is was definitely going to cause her to have re-aggravated trauma and there was already some type of tension and animosity present b simone put out this weak diss song calling her baby mother number three after B. Simone was just basically sucking her nipples about how Danny is a Latina and she has the upper hand and she can dance and how much more sense it made for the baby to choose her over B. Simone. Whole time though, B. Simone should have never even wanted to be intermixed in that ghetto fairy tale between the baby and his three baby mothers, but that wasn't enough for B. Simone to still insert herself and have communication with the baby. I'm on your ass because why are you still talking to this man or why did you ever talk to him? He's made it clear what type of man he is. So if I'm Danny and my child's father who has pretty much embarrassed me and added to the downfall of my career reputation, the last thing I want to do is be around a girl who has added to that, flip-flopped on me from being a fan to now a hater, and then be on a comedy show where they do hit below the belt and make a lot of jokes about personal situations. Now, I do think that Danny Lay should have been a lot tougher than that because this is work and it's business and in life, you have to be around people that you don't like all the time. This recently happened
happened to me. And as awkward as it is, if you stand in the fact that the situation is what it is, there's nothing that those people can do or say that would really get under your skin because you already accepted the fact that it is what it is. And that comes with growing up and realizing that there's no way to get along with everybody in life. I have people subscribe to me who probably don't like the things that I say, and that's just life. So Danny should have stood in a lot more confidence, a lot more acceptance of the situation, and a lot more prestige knowing that you have to go up against a girl who already said that you have the upper hand against her. But I do think that every woman on this earth who has a young baby and had a tumultuous breakup with their child's father, if confronted by someone who also has ties to your child's father and doesn't like you, would also feel uncomfortable. And I don't like the fact that there was a lot of women acting as if they wouldn't feel a type of way because a lot of women would. You may not make the same request that Danny Lay made, but I do think that anybody would feel uncomfortable. And I don't think it hurts to ask. I wouldn't have done it. But clearly, Danny Lay is very soft and very sensitive, especially when it deals with her baby daddy. And I think it's just going to take some time for her to get over it. I think she's trying to move so fast and get over the situation, but it really does take time. Neither one of these women struck me as mature, so I found it very funny that B. Simone tried to give a politically correct answer by calling Danny Lay immature when B. Simone is not Michelle Obama or Condoleezza Rice. You literally just look so goofy fiending over a man who didn't choose you all while you proceeded to hype up the person that he chose over you. Make it make sense. If you ask me, this was an attempt to go viral and it worked, but it didn't work in the favor that B. Simone thought it would because at the end of the day, it was very messy and very random. I know it also came out that another radio station that Kendra G is the host for made similar allegations about Danny Lay and then it came back out that it wasn't the case. Yellowbone is not what he wanted. What he wanted was to see you fail, see everybody stop talking to you, stop messing with you, stop talking about you, promoting your music, and make you feel less of a woman because the baby is a narcissist who is also receiving his karma. I found it funny that back when all of that nonsense happened before, the baby went live to address that whole Danny Lay situation and beating up her brother and everything that was going on behind the scenes just for him to be receiving his karma being that he really has been canceled. And I don't say this to blame everything on the baby, but I do think that he is the majority of the reason why all of this has happened. And this goes to show how one pitiful pulsing piping penis can really deteriorate the reputation, the quality, and the ethics of the women involved with said pulsing piping penis. Let this be a lesson to you ladies that you don't mess with men who only care about themselves and don't show any qualities of having good morals. The fact that all of this hoopla stems back from one man's snicker bar is so wild to me because all of these ladies can do better. I'm not saying that Danny Lay and B. Simone need to be friends. Clearly lines were crossed so they do not necessarily have to reconcile Style. But making a behind the scenes production situation public to spite her is so corny on B. Simone's behalf. And to let another woman who was your biggest fan intimidate you is so corny on Danny Lay's behalf. The baby is probably sitting at home watching all of this unfold, feeling like the man, even though he's not, because there's too much commentary about a situation that should have been dead a long time ago. Do better, ladies. So that is it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Please let me know your commentary on my commentary down below. What do you think? What do you know? Let me know. If you haven't already, please follow me on all my social media networks and i will see y'all in my next video bye y'all attention all eyes on me it's clean see you'll never be y'all not on my pedigree let's go let's go let's go uh your man told me i'm pressure tell me too hot stay out my desert humble and joins is my pleasure i'm in the game and y'all just register uh new freestyle to your checklist close to your block like i play tetris quiet ho let me finish my sentence 10 that see like i'm from memphis going big like i'm from texas life is being blessed and exes made that boy make me his best friend. <gasps> now he breathless green white green one i be repping nardo wicked when we stepping jerky niggas i'm rejecting make me teach your ass a lesson i'ma call him when i need some money i ain't trying to wait mission in the motherland bitch leave it by the gate i'd rather counting money up my sis driving the getaway it's queen trauma trigger cause you know i make it ricochet told y'all it's a ceremony every day a cabaret Get out my way i'm out the way they say i'm out the ordinary call my favorite cousins up they round the way and on the way had to come to auntie house cause last time i did i said